It was billed at the Battle of the Big Boys, the promotion six-pointer. It was 12 men against nine men. It was Wigan Athletic versus Blackburn Rovers. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match review. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Yep, it was billed the game of the season thus far in League One. Wigan Athletic last season relegated from the Championship against Blackburn Rovers last season relegated from the Championship. Both have started the season, well, Rovers not so great. Wigan doing okay. Second spot, but it ended up 0-0 at the DW. Blackburn Rovers down to 10 men initially. Elliot Bennett sent off for a dubious second uh, yellow card. Uh, in the end, Harry Chapman uh, going off with an injury and Rovers without any sub uh, substitutions left to, uh, to bring him off officially. So Rovers had to play the game with nine men against, and I said against 12 men because it seemed like the referee was all about Wigan. That, that dubious decision right there, sending off Elliot Bennett uh, the tip of the iceberg. So let's take a look at the statistics here. These take from the BBC website. It shows Wigan with 53% of possession compared to Blackburn Rovers, 47. A whopping statistic there in favour of our, our hosts. Wigan with 13 shots, two on target, eight corners for the day. Whereas Blackburn Rovers, only the five shots, one on target, two corners, 21 fouls overall. Quick look at the starting lineups for Wigan. Jones, Bryn, Dunkley, Byrne, Elder, Morsi, Massey, Power, Powell, Jacobs, and Tony. There's a lot of uh, tongue tangling, ting tangling, tongue twisters in there with Morsi and Massey and Power and Powell. Uh, not to mention Byrne and Byrne. Uh, as for Rovers, Ryer and Gold, Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Conway, Whittingham, Smallwood, Bennett, Dak, and Antwonson. Once again, starting down proves to be a crucial, a crucial factor with another clean sheet. And also, uh, Tony Mowbray sign him up on a permanent deal with you in January. This guy could be a bargain of the season. I don't know what he deserved uh, to be relegated out of MK Dons and get promoted to the Blackburn Rovers first team lineup. But anyway, I'll take it. Uh, here's my match uh, pro ratings for the players. Raya with eight, Naomi six, Downing seven, Mulgrew seven, Williams with eight, that's uh, mainly down to that clearance. Uh, Conway seven, Whittingham six, Smallwood seven, Bennett with a six. Hopefully he'll get that red card rescinded with some retrospective action, um, because obviously it was not a dive. Bradley Dak seven and Antwinson with a six. I, uh, in all fairness, I would have taken a point from the game before kickoff, because Wigan were going into this on fire, their last few results at home. Uh, I don't think they've actually lost once at home. Uh, and us with a uh, slip sloppy uh, recent bit of form I would have taken a point hands down so I feel it's a point one for Rovers two points drop for the for Latix um, but anyway it's not what I have to say it's what the gaff has to say let's take a listen to what Tony Morris had to say after the match uh, and about Harry Chapman's injury well a bit of both I think I think we uh, we have to be happy to take a point considering we finished with nine men um, I thought it was a fantastic effort from the team, right from the first whistle on the front foot, asking questions of them and pressing and closing down. And um, yeah, and I thought on, on the hour mark, I thought if there was one team going to win it, it was probably us. I think we were starting to build some momentum after the first initial few minutes in the second half, and um, and asking questions of them on the change of possession, asking questions of their defenders. But the sending off obviously changed everything, um, put us on the back foot, pushed them higher up the pitch. Still carried a threat, I thought. I thought Danny Graham was going to put Caddis in to score to, to win 1 0, but um, yeah, a frustration. But then we went down to nine men, and obviously we have to hang in and defend and let them have the ball and just defend the box, which we did very well. Um, listen, the referee's decision, it, 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 it's sad really in football matches against you know such a, a big game at this level um, that everybody ends up talking about the officials. It's, um, it shouldn't be the case, and yet. Having watched the incident back on Elliot Bennett, just just because there might not be any contact, um, I don't think it's a it's a, a yellow, definitely not a yellow card. Because if he he either smashes into the boy, and they both get injured, or he gets out of the way of a hanging leg, really, that he's flipped the ball over. And um, if the ref didn't think it was a foul, just play on, just let the game flow. Um, I don't know why he felt he had to make a decision like that. Um, 
Elliot's devastated in there. I think we it took the opportunity of winning the game away from us. I think, but um, but never mind. It's 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 okay. We'll we'll put the point. You know, Wigan Athletic away is, is not an easy game, as as we know they've won all games at home this year. I think and. Slight tinge of disappointment that it wasn't another one nil win away against one of the top teams. Yeah, I'm not sure he did. To be honest, he took so long on pulling the, the you know, I think he. Um, it's done. I, I just, I just feel you know, lessons for young officials, just to be more humble about the way they go about their job. Um, you know, have some communication lines with the players. You know, have some respect out on the pitch with each other. And, and I'm not sure it was both ways today. Um, and yeah, yeah, again, I, I don't want to be overcritical. I think they're young guys learning their trade. It's um, you know they're trying to get to the Premier League as, as we're trying to get to the Premier League. I would assume. Um, I, I do think if I was assessing him today, I would be talking about his his body language and um, making sure he feels he can talk and have discussions with the players and the management on the touchline. There's not an, there's not a more honest footballer I've ever worked with in nearly 15 years of management than, than Elliot Bennett. Um, but the, the referee doesn't know that, and, you know, I, and yet I do know that, and it was just one of those situations that we had to, um, ultimately we had to deal with. We were frustrated, we were disappointed, the kids really disappointed. Um, the referee will go home and he'll have a look, the assessor will be sitting in his office talking to him now, They'll, you know, hopefully they think that um, it, it was the wrong decision, you know, probably won't be though, they'll probably be thinking what a great decision. And, um, we all have to accept it. It's football, modern day football. The difficult for us, of course, is we, we miss Elliot for the next game. And um, but I could also stand here and say that's okay because he could do with the rest. He plays just about every minute of every match for us. And um, so take the opportunity to rest up your body and uh, um, get ready to go again. Yeah, I thought we were good for staff as well. I thought it was fantastic front foot pressing a team that generally, as you study Wigan and the build up to this game, generally pass every team in this league to death really. And um, and eventually end up grinding them down and winning. We, we, I think we took their initiative away, we took their fluency away. I think you know, Smallwood, Whittingham, um, Craig, Bennett were, were exceptionally good at pressing and working really hard. But Dak helped that as well, of course. And um, Tonneson is a player today because he can run all day, he's a workaholic really. At, um, so, yeah, it was a good performance, I think, without giving the fans a real reward of managing to win it. Well, it's not good news, I've just said there that he's never had a hamstring injury before, but that was a hamstring. That's ultimately, I suppose, why he wasn't sure he went back on the pitch for a minute or two and then realised it, it was twinging away. So, um, we'll scan him. He's, as I say, he's only a young boy, Harry Chapman. He's, you know, unless you know him, you don't realise how immature he can be at times. And yet, he's, um, he'll have to learn about his own body. <coughs> what we do know is he's a fast twitch footballer who can really run and change speed. and and they are at times more vulnerable to, to hamstring strains. Um, we'll get him scanned, we'll know more, but we won't be, you know, he's, bottom line, he's not our player. We have to be very, very careful with him. We have to make sure that he's 100% right before we look. You know, we, I would suggest in four, six weeks time, hopefully that he's, um, he's ready to go again. You've seen, everyone's seen the impact he can make on, on, on our team when he comes off the bench or in, in the last game when he started and, you know, created the first goal for Bradley. Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I think when teams come and sit in at home, particularly, he, he, he can make the difference late on when they get tired and we can switch it across to him and he can go one on one past people, cutting the ball across a six yard line. He, he can make the difference for us. But um, we're going to be without him for a few weeks and so we have to accept that and, uh, and, and just keep going. So, yes, folks, Harry Chapman pulled up with a hamstring injury, so that will rule him out of the Fleetwood game. And also, Elliot Bennett will probably be, well, unless some uh, mega retros uh, retrospective action occurs, he, he he won't be in the lineup either. But we'll talk more about the Fleetwood game in my preview. Special Halloween preview coming up in about a day or so, so stand by for that. It's going to be a belter. But anyway, back onto social media. What have the fans been saying and what have the players been saying? David Raya said after the match, good point in the end after being with a man down for 30 minutes. Great shift from the boys and always pleased to keep a clean sheet. Yes, fair play to David Raya. Obviously Downing gets a lot of praise, seems to be a lucky penny, but uh, Raya keeping a clean sheet, also good news. Harry Chapman after the game also, great result with, we dug deep with 10 men, gutted to come off with injury. That's a shame. Bradley Dak also a good point today and something we can build on Tuesday. Traveling support were brilliant once again. Into the fans now. Alex Colpan said on Twitter, very hard fought point there for Rovers.
but we can but can we just take a minute to appreciate our lucky omen mr paul downing hashtag team clean sheet alex hook said on the rovers facebook page good committed performance against probably the best team in the league <clears throat> uh, i think you were mistaken there anyway uh, and we were getting on top before the ref ruined the game. Promising signs. Andy Wharton also snuck in there with a reply. In fairness to TM, his game plan was working well. The two lads coming on with a full side on the pitch for the last eight minutes. I think we would have won. I agree. But a good point in the circumstances. We move on. Some Latics fans a bit miffed after the game. Awful tactics from Latics. Now up top and played not to lose but not to win either. At awful game. Will Rayner also said, if we can't beat any of the top teams, then there's a problem. And the fact that they were playing with a man down two. Yep. Meanwhile, on the League One banter group on the Facebook says, celebrating a point against Wigan proves my point. Blackman Rovers are shit. Oh my lord. Anyway, Mark Ricketts also in the same vein on the League One banter group says, in pretty white writing, biggest team in League One. My ass! 11 players behind the ball and celebrating nil-nil like you won the league. Yes, we are the biggest team in the league. Meanwhile, Tim Endon on the League One banter group said, How come when Wigan are at home, they have a dodgy referee that always looks like the same bloke, just different names? Kai Platt replied, Legit, don't know, but he usually hates us. Fact was the Bennett sending off. Also, James Hayden, a.k.a. the American Rover? Wigan, our shit, couldn't even beat us with a paid-off ref and nine men. We'll smash you at Ewood. Nice sponsors you have on all of the bottom rows. Looks much better than people in the seats. Ha-ha. Meanwhile, Adam Blackburn, cracking surname, by the way. Cheers for the point, Wigan. Thought you were going to thrash us. Well done, Peterborough, for beating Shrewsbury. We'll talk about that shortly. Meanwhile, Alex Colpan sneaks in there again. In fact, that's like a double post. Got to remove that bad boy. Moving on, Nicky Robinson on the League One banter group said, obviously Wigan saw us as a threat as they needed 12 versus 10 for a nil-nil. Mason Taylor in the same group. Did you know Wigan couldn't beat seventh place nine men Blackburn at home? By the way, Wigan's support is still poop. Meanwhile, Lewis Hartley also said in the League One banter group, Wigan couldn't beat nine men. How embarrassing. Indeed, Mason Taylor continues in the same vein. What's the difference between Plymouth and Wigan? Plymouth actually scored against 11 men, Blackburn, and Wigan couldn't score against nine. Whereas, whereas our favourite rover, Andrew Evans, says, where's your three points? Where's your three points, Wigan? Blackburn are the pride of the Northwest with a nil-nil draw with nine men. Steve Swain also joins in on the rover's page. All in all, decent point. Wigan's fans, hold your heads in shame. Top of the league at home and playing the bookies favorite in a Lancashire derby. Your support today was piss poor. Good job, we made some noise for ya. Let's take a look around the grounds. These are some of the results that might be of interest to us. Next up, Fleetwood Town. They were two nil winners over Oxford United. Meanwhile, team we beat last time, Portsmouth suffered a home defeat against Bradford. Who else we got? Obviously, there was that crucial Shrewsbury defeat. Peterborough picking up massive three points. Get himself back in the mix themselves. 1-0 winners. Uh, who else? Who else is in there that's of interest? Rotherham suffered a home defeat against strugglers Gillingham. Meanwhile, Berry can continue their woeful form, losing 1-0 at home to Doncaster. Charlton continue their push up to the top of the table. 1-0 victors at AFC Wimbledon. But that's pretty much all I've got for you folks. Make sure you head over to my YouTube and hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I am on Twitter, SoundCloud, Facebook and iTunes if you want to check me out on the go. Um, yeah, no goals, to, no goals to talk about really. No real standout performances. Attacking wise, it was good to see uh, uh, the lineup. I did kind of call it. I thought Antonsen will get the nod ahead of Grant to start. Um, and I feel Tony Mowbray got his plan right. It was working out until the referee stuck his beak in it and put uh, a spanner in the works by sending off Elliot Bennett. The most honest man in football. That's what Tony Mowbray said in the comments earlier. So I agree. He is a nice chap. Nothing bad to say about Elliot Bennett and he would be the last person you would expect to dive. Um, so, yeah. It's a bit, it's a little bit bitter pill to swallow because I think we could have snatched it if it was eleven men versus eleven uh, for the whole ninety minutes. I think Chapman would have done something, 
uh, spectacular because he is a nightmare and he's going to be a miss in the Fleetwood game. But like I said, I'll talk more about the Fleetwood game as we build up to it. But until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.